put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Home Alone, 1991, Game Review. When the McAllisters went from vacation, they forgot one very important thing. Kevin. That's actually the extent of the story in this game, you know, and then suddenly you're setting up traps and there are gonna be burglars around, you know, but yeah. Back in the day, video games did not do much to tell their story, especially in the case of licensed games, where it's expected that you watch the movie. And of course, if you did watch the movie, it's really not a secret that the favorite part of pretty much anyone who even has a smidgen of respect for this movie, enjoys it even a little bit, their favorite part is going to be the climax. And yeah, I'm going on the assumption that people know what the climax of the movie is, otherwise spoilers, I guess. Where Kevin sets up all these traps and fights off the two burglars. And yeah, the entire game is that portion of the movie. And this is one of the cases where a licensed game pretty well works. And it's in part because they were dealt a really good hand. I mean, when you watch the, the film, the climax is really a an obvious thing to make a video game out of. You know, you almost have to wonder if they didn't think, you know, we, if we write the scene this way, it's gonna be really easy to make a video game adaptation. You know, and this is, yeah, this is one of the licensed games that makes sense in the context of the original. It's not one where they strain, you know, strain themselves really to think of some concept. It certainly makes a lot more sense the, than the Home Alone 2 game where you are running around the hotel, dodging automatic vacuum cleaners. That one's just weird. Anyway, the basic idea is, as in the movie, it's 8 o'clock, there's one hour left before Harry and Marv arrive, time to set up some traps. And basically you run around the McAllister home finding things, it's like the the montage in the movie. Finding things, placing them strategically so that they will be, you know, good traps. This is, I suppose you could say Kevin takes a little bit less of an active role. You know, in the movie he's activating a lot of the traps, aiming and such. In this he basically just places stuff and you have to lure Harry and Marv into the various traps, although there is st still some traps that need activating, and those are a lot of fun. Very, very tense. Very tense game in general, but I'll get to that. So yeah, you run around. It's been a while since I watched the movie, but I'm pretty sure that they got pretty much the entire house quite right. You know, there, there are the two floors, there are you know, you've got Kevin's room, Buzz's room, complete with a tarantula, which, by the way, moves around as it wants, you know, and yeah, if it moves, you know, into, it, it doesn't really target Harry and Marv, but it'll just move around, you know, completely randomly, and if it touches them, they will, you know, be startled. I don't think it actually counts as doing damage to them, I'll, I'll get to that, but yeah. So, you know, you've got the dining room, the kitchen, all these various places. 
and the the traps as well. You know, they're, they're creative, like in the movie, and a lot of them are. Well, several of them are from the movie, and in general, they're just. There are a couple of sort of reused basic concepts, like there are a bunch of things that you place on the floor and then they trip over it, but I don't feel like they really, like, use this exact same idea twice, you know, I mean, I, I suppose the, the closest the, they come to reusing an idea is when there there is both a What's it called? A, a roller skate, the, the old kind. Not, not inliners or something cool like that, the old kind of dorky roller skates. And then there is a toy car, and I suppose you could say that, you know, both of those, roughly the same size, both have wheels. But yeah, that's about the closest it comes, you know, other than that, you know, you place a bag of flour to where it'll, you know, fall on their head. Actually, I think you have to shoot that one, you know, with the BB gun. You know, you place a pot of boiling water on the floor so they'll trip over it, you know, you use the hose to spray some water so they'll slip in it, you know, stuff like that. And you can go outside, you can go into the treehouse, you go into the attic, the basement, it's all there. And a lot of the, you know, something that really makes this work is that there isn't just one path through the house. So, basically, you're setting up a minefield and you get to, it's, it's like guerrilla warfare. I don't know if you can tell, but I freaking love this game. It really appeals to me in that kind of way. You're just running around, luring Harry and Marv into these traps. And, you know, you can, you know, say you're on the second floor, you're in the, I don't know, I guess it's like a, a bathroom kind of thing. There's a laundry chute. That leads into the basement. From the basement, you can go up the stairs and back into the house, or you can leave through the back stairs and get to the back of the house. And all these, you know... So, yeah, you, you strategize. You know, you're not just randomly running around. Some of the traps you place at doors, and they'll only be activated by someone moving, for example, left to right through the door. If they go right to left, it's not gonna activate. You know, and as you go, you know, there are just enough traps. I guess, I, I'm not going to give you the exact number. I, I want you to discover that for yourself. But there are only, you know, there, there aren't very many traps that you can sort of waste. Which basically means, you know, once Harry and Mar arrive, if you walk into a trap yourself, you're not going to take, like, damage or something, you know, but it's going to be, you know, destroyed, and it'll say, oops, you know, and that might have been a really important trap, you know, also note that, you know, there are only so many places in a room that you can place a trap, you know, you can place maybe three or four traps at the most in a single room, and then you have to lure, then you have to leave the room, you know, if, if you were in the room and you lured Harry or Marvin there, you have to get out of the room without getting past them, because if they touch you, it's instant death. You know, basically, they capture you and that's it, you know. So, yeah, you have to lure them into another room, get them into some more traps, and you have to be really careful. I mentioned that a lot of the traps are on the floor, you have to jump over them. If you don't jump at the right time and land in it, that's a botched trap, and you only have so many, you know, and as you near the, you know, as, as you get closer and closer to winning, you're going to have fewer and fewer traps to lure them into. Each trap only has one use, and yeah, if, if you run out of traps, that's just it, you know, there's, there's nothing, you can use, you can fire the BB gun at them as many times as you want, but it's only the first shot that actually counts as dealing damage. Now, a little more on the traps. Basically, you know, you, you move towards, you, you move around. At first you can't necessarily tell what can be used as a trap and what can't. But when you get close to something, it'll start blinking. And then you press, I've only played this on the PC, you press the F1 button 
to pick something up. F2 cycles through, you can carry up to three things at a time. So you really want to be, you know, careful about not. Did I mention you have eight minutes? You know, that in game time, it's, you know, it says you have an hour, you know, eight to nine. At nine, they arrive, and then you cannot set up more tracks, no matter, you know, no matter what you're carrying. The only thing you get to carry after nine is the BB gun, which again, you can use any time. So yeah, you know, but yeah, in, in real time, it's only eight minutes to, you know, to set up all these traps. And yeah, they, and, and F3 places it or puts it down. If you can't find somewhere to place it or you want to pick something else up, you can always just use F3, dump it there. It's just not going to count as a trap once it's nine o'clock. And once you've marked something in, you know, with, with F2, if you if you're going through the three items you've picked up, it will, there, there will be these yellow arrows, very, you can't miss them. Yellow arrows somewhere on the screen, if you, you know, where you can place them, and once you get close enough, it will change to say here or something, so you know, okay, if I press F3 now, it's gonna count as a trap, you know, so you don't accidentally waste any of these very important traps. By the way, basically moving through the house, you know, you, you press up at a door or a stairwell or some stuff like that, and if you, you know, as you move, basically the, the screen moves with you once it, you know, once you're about, you know, the, the various rooms will be more than a single screen sometimes, so it'll move. It's like in something like Keen, you know, Commander Keen or Earthworm Gym, you know, stuff like that. And yes, I believe that just about covers it for the traps. Now, I've mentioned damage. I should explain basically every hit does, I guess it counts as like five damage or something. And Harry and Marv have 50 health points each. So you have to damage them ten times each, and you don't have to worry. Every single, everything that damages them at all deals that amount of damage, you know. So yeah, you have to lure them into ten traps, or possibly nine traps if you shoot both of them once, you know, with a BB gun. And yeah, there every trap slows them down. You know, gives them just one or two seconds where they stand completely still and giving you a little bit of time to move. I still wouldn't move towards them. I'd say that's probably a bad idea, but you know, it gives you time to exit the room. And by the way, if you are being chased, quick hint, you can use the BB gun. You know, turn around real quickly, shoot. One thing you definitely want to avoid is having one on either side of you. You're pretty much a goner, you know. That, that is just never going to work out well. And the... Now, once if you do manage to damage them ten times, they'll just sit down and, and it'll say, you know, like, Harry quit or Marv quit, you know, and they'll just sit there and actually, and, and now you can touch them all you want, nothing's going to happen. And they'll just sit there like, you know, banging their hand into the ground, just shaking their head no, and just, no, just no more, I, I, I'm at my limit, man, you know, and, and it'll say that, but this is a good time to bring up the HUD. At the top, you have, you know, the, the HUD changes from if you're setting up traps or if you're, you know, if, if Harry and Marv have arrived, you know. When you're setting up traps, uh, you, you can see the three items at the top of the screen in the, in the middle section. You can see the items that you have picked up, and there's a watch that'll say, you know, 8 something, you know, and again, it starts at 8 and ends at 9, you know, and regardless of what situation you are in at 9, it'll be. Actually, I think there's also like a button you can push. If you finish really early and you just don't want to wait the rest of those minutes, I just don't remember what button it is, but yeah. And you want to make sure you're in a good position, like literally 
where you are in the house might really matter because you, if you are like right outside the house, they might capture you immediately, you know. So yeah, and yeah, the once they arrive, it's gonna change to watch. Yeah, basically saying you know going going up, and I don't think you can wait like too long. It's basically just for the high score table, you know. You can tell, oh, am I gonna beat my old high score? Am I gonna beat my buddy's high score? You know, and then you have the two images of Harry and Marv in the two upper upper corners of the screen, and these images will show you exactly what is happening, no matter where they are in the house. If they've just walked into a trap, you'll see their reaction to the trap, which is really awesome because otherwise you completely miss it because you can't always be there to see their reaction to the trap and those are just hilarious you know you literally will see you know they're slipping in the water falling over toys you know all this stuff it's just, it's priceless you know and again it's you know what again favorite part of the movie so yeah and yeah so so it'll say that and it'll write the It'll show the name of the trap that they walked into, which again is why you know it's really good that they're all different. By the way, there's even a banana peel. Yeah, you know, and yeah, it'll say they just walked into this trap, and you'll be like, and and again, strategize, thinking about, okay, so I guess they're in that position of the room then, because it'll write what room they're in, unless they're in the same room as you, and then they'll, their image will disappear completely, and then you better be ready for whatever direction they're coming from, because it doesn't show, necessarily, but if you know what room they just came from, you know, again, think about where the... It's, it's very much a strategy game, really. Think about where they just came from. You know, the... the, the because every room, when you walk through it, no matter if you're setting up traps, or if Harry and Marv have arrived, it'll show which room you're in. It'll, it'll have the word for, you know... So, yeah, and even though there's like two hallways... Yeah, something like that. And they, they're numbered. So, you know, it's hallway one, hallway two. So you can still tell which one they're in, you know. By the way, if you're very near something you can use to get out of them, like, it might be a door, it might be the laundry chute, it'll change the word to that and suddenly be in blue instead of the usual red, so you can tell, ah, this is, you know, I'm close enough to use the laundry chute, so you don't accidentally stand just far enough away that you can't go in and keep pressing one and then they catch you, you know. Now, the... Yes, and, and their speed is also something very important. The closer they are to you, the faster they'll move. I, I guess basically they have two speeds. Fast for when they're in the next room from you. I don't know, I guess they are part bloodhound because they can apparently tell where you've just been. Don't ask me. It's just, it, it works in the game, you know. It's, it's an aspect that really works. It, it keeps the tension going. And if they're in the same room as you, then they'll also be, you know, basically running. And if they're not in the same room as you, and they're more than one room away, you know, the text showing what room they're in will be blue instead of red for when they're one room away. And their movement will be slower, you know, they'll just be walking. They'll just be walking around trying to find you. They can still move into traps, but you have more difficulty luring them into traps. If you're one room away from them, you can lure them into trap after trap, basically. You know, the one thing you gotta note is they'll only be following, like, yeah, basically you can, they'll, they'll only go that one direction, you know, at, like I said, you can't pass them. So if you're in the unfortunate situation where you have a bunch of traps that require them going left to right and you're being chased right to left, then you gotta figure out a way to get them in a position where they are, you know, chasing you the other way around. It's possible, but I'm not gonna give it away here. It's a lot of fun to find out for yourself. Now, basically the one thing about this game is that it's not terribly long. 
and it doesn't have that much replayability to it. The thing is, it's not terribly random where Harry and Marge start out and how they move through the house. So once you've figured out how to take care of them and you are pretty good at not botching your own traps and you know, you know the layout of the house, it's gonna, you know, it's still incredibly tense, don't get me wrong, but there's not that much to play it again for. I, I said there's a high score table, that's basically it, you know, I, I don't know, you, you should challenge your friends to it, you know, and see who can get the best time, because like I said, you know, it notes your time if you won and how much damage you caused, but that's really, you know, that's it. They're, they're, you know, either you win or you lose, and then you get the, you know, yeah, you, you get put on the high score table if you did well enough for that, and that's basically it. It takes roughly 20 minutes to play, at least if you, if you win, it'll take 20 minutes or a little more, maybe a little less. It took me 20 minutes this time, but I also, you know, some of the time I was being chased in the wrong direction, so I had to, you know, fiddle around with that. But yeah, it's not a very long game, and, you know, if you paid a lot of money for it, you're going to be disappointed by that. And, yeah, the, the basically, the any kind of length comes out of the time you spend trying to figure out how to play it. You know, it's, yeah, a lot like other games of this era, it just really is about the first several times you play it, you're not going to be able to beat it because there's a learning curve to it. And once you get to the point where you can beat it, yeah, you know, and where stuff like Super Mario Land had a bunch of extras you could find and a bunch of hidden you know, places where you could get extra, excuse me, extra coins, and, you know, if you get really good, then you don't lose so many lives there and there, and maybe you get so good you don't lose any lives, and you get several extra lives, all this kind of stuff, not in this game, you know, so, yeah, there's, there's not much to it once you figured out how to beat it. The graphics are pretty decent, they, you know, they're good enough for the the time this was made, you know, very pixelated and very, you know, but you can tell what things are supposed to be. Kevin looks like Kevin, basically, maybe the face isn't terribly Macaulay Culkin-esque, but, you know, he's wearing the same clothes as he is in the movie. Harry and Marv definitely look a lot like, you know, they really looked at how Joe Pesci and I am so sorry, actor play Marv, but I cannot remember your name. You don't scare me quite as much as Pesci does, you know. It's yeah. They they really looked at what they actually look like, and especially the, sort of the clothes. Maybe the the faces aren't yeah. It's, in general, the, the faces aren't quite as good, you know. Now, the, the music is decent, and same for the sound, not really anything special, you know, even for when this was made, nothing special. Animations are fine, and, and sort of movements, pretty standard stuff, you know. And basically, as, as Kevin, the only thing you can really do is, you know, run around, there's only the one speed for him to move, jump, and, you know, do, do the running jump for a little bit extra, which will sometimes really be necessary to clear a trap, and, and, and then, you know, use the BB gun to shoot, and, yeah, that's, that's basically it, you know. The, the real strengths of this are in the the concept, the sort of, the, the level of detail, the, the love with which they recreate all these areas in the film, 
you know, it really is like playing the climax, and I personally just love stuff like that. You know, I, I don't know, I'm the kind of guy, when I watch a really good movie, and it's something that could work as a video game, I'm often thinking, I want to play that. You know, I, I want to play that as a video game, so this is a, a really good chance to do that, and it's a lot of fun, and it's definitely very rewarding to play, you know, it just, once you master it, there's really nowhere else to go with it, you know, but something I really like about it, which I'm not sure I've made entirely clear yet, is the tension, you know, like I said, you have to damage them ten times each, you know, there's two of them, they could, you know, they could come from either side if you're not careful. And if they touch you just once, you know, you, you could have damaged them combined 19 times. One of them could be down, the other one could be almost down. If he touches you, you still lose. You know, you, you still get a decent spot on the, the high score table, but you're still lost, you know. And I just really like that, uh, like I say, maybe 20 minutes of game time, you're on the edge of your seat for those 20 minutes. You know, there's there's nothing... You're not safe at all in this game at any point. You know, if, if you want to, like, relax, you have to just pause the game and leave the computer for a little bit. That's, that's literally it. You know, and I just really like when a game does that. Even if it's then not very long. Like, like with The House of the Dead, the original game, anyway. The 1998 game. But, but yeah, you know, you're, you're fighting an uphill battle, but it's winnable. It can be done. If you get really good at it, you really strategize, you really know exactly where your traps, where your traps are and how they work, you can win. It'll still be a battle. But you can do it. You know, I, I just really love stuff like that. I, I, there are way too many games from this era which are essentially unbeatable. You know, they're, they're so freaking tough. Some of them right from the very beginning of the game. You know, I, I mean, I recently reviewed Spider-Man. That one's really, you know, unbelievably frustrating, you know. I wanted to say just one more thing, let me think. Well, maybe I did get everything. Now I remember. The traps, how they work, that's also going to be some of the initial challenge because there's, I don't know, I didn't get a manual with this game, so maybe it isn't manual, but if you only play it, the game doesn't really directly tell you how to do anything. And the first time, I mean, I told you the, the F1 through F3 button thing, I'm not sure that's in, if you go into the setup, which, you know, I'm not sure how many people even, you know, did that back then. I, th I guess you had to be like a bit more of a computer person than just someone who wanted to play a game and have a little fun, you know, to actually go into the setup file. But yeah, in there you can rearrange the jump and shoot buttons, but I'm not sure it actually tells you that F1 through F3 is for the traps. And I'm pretty sure you can't rearrange those, though I'm not entirely sure why you really want to. And of course you use the cursor keys. Or actually I think you might be able to use the num keyboard, numpad keyboard. Yeah. Instead, and then you shoot like with the plus on the numpad. Anyway. Yeah, you know, figuring out how the traps work. And one thing is placing them, another is some of them you need to shoot, and at first you might not be able to tell, do I need to shoot this one or not? You know, and yeah. By the way, be careful about shooting either Harry or Marv just as they're walking into a trap that doesn't need shooting, because I'm not sure, I think that resets the, because you, if you just shoot them and they've already been shot to the point where it damaged them, 
then shooting them is only going to slow them down for like a second, whereas a trap might slow them down for like two seconds. Which is also something I really respect about this game. It actually gives you a grace period. When you, when you do damage them, you feel like you accomplish something, even though it's only one-tenth of the way there. In, in the overall scheme of things, a twentieth. You still feel like you did something. Again, too many games from this period, you punch somebody, and there's barely a grace period, you know, you barely stun them at all. So, you know, you feel like it's just, yeah. But, but yeah, you, you cut down the grace period if you accidentally shoot them at the wrong time when they're in the middle of, you know, being damaged by a trap, so be careful about that. But yeah, a lot of fun game. It's, it's a really good challenge. And it's a ton of fun learning how to how to do well at the game and and mastering it, you know. And it really rewards mastering it and really rewards planning and learning, knowing, yeah, lear learning the way. The, the layout of the house and exactly where you can move from where to where, you know. The, the shortcuts you can take. And some of them I'm not sure the, you know, Harry and Marv can actually take. So, yeah, that helps even out the playing field as well. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.